Hi everyone, welcome to the Charlottesville Tim Myler uh, video tutorial of the course. Uh, I'm Mark Lorenzoni, I'll be your host today. I had the distinct honor of co-directing the race with my buddy Dave Murphy from 1984 to 1995. That's the start, 1984 was the start of the city course, the Charlottesville Track Club. This legendary run we moved from the old Camp Holiday Trails course to the city course, uh, guiding us along today on his uh, trusty bicycle. There's a good buddy, John Conroy. Um, we're along the start of the race, and uh, having been a coach for the 10 mile training program for almost 30 years, and of course, like I said, director and helped design the course, I can tell you that uh, one of the toughest and hardest and most sneaky half miles of the course is the first half mile. Um, your adrenaline's flowing, you're in a crowd, there are crowds of folks cheering, um, it all feels great, you're fresh, so uh, you have to be careful because uh, that long uh, uphill which we just climbed, uh, we crested it um, just now, but we climbed for almost a half a mile, is uh, pretty tough on the body long term, long term meaning you'll feel it towards the latter part of the race. So what am I saying? Ease into it nice and slowly. Uh, the 10 miler, like many of the other Schultzel Track Club foot races, uh, gives a half mile split. And you'll want to monitor that if you're shooting for 10 minute pace and you go through that half mile split at 430, you better slow it down because that means you, your effort coming up that long hill was more like 8 minute pace. The pace actually says 9 minute pace. And of course, none of that equals 10 minute pace, which is your goal. So um, <clears throat> you want to be careful. The half mile mark is right about in here just along where uh, St. Mark's is. Um, we set out, um, there were about 10 of us guys, uh, back in the early 80s to design this course. We set out to um, really showcase uh, the city of Charlottesville and um, Jefferson's beautiful uh, University of Virginia. And we hope that uh, folks, when they complete the course, feel like they've really accomplished something and um, physically a good challenge, but also at the same time, have gotten a really good sense of this uh, um, historic and beautiful community. Okay, well, so we're on Alderman now, and uh, it's been described as a roller coaster. Um, this is one of the places on the course that you'll double back on later on. We'll talk about it coming back, but certainly going out here, you're still wanting to very much not push the pace. I always tell folks, don't pass people in the first mile um, if you can help it. If you've lined up properly, meaning in your correct pace group, why would you be passing people that are faster than you um, at the beginning of the race, but it's a common uh, trap to get into. I, I sound like a big preacher, but uh, at the same time, most of my preaching comes from my own stupid mistakes I made in my early years of racing. So a good idea is just to continue to keep it at bay and stay relaxed. Perceived effort on the uphills, meaning slow down the pace so that your breathing and your efforts stay the same as it would be on a flat or downhill. Uh, we're approaching uh, um, St. Thomas. Uh, Aquinas, the Catholic Church, the student parish, and you get a little reprieve here, a nice uh, downhill um, section. And this, you know, on the downhills, it's okay to let it go a little bit in the early parts of the race. You're not going to, you're not going to get any long-term uh, kickback from that negative feedback later on in the race. It's when you're pushing the uphills that, <clears throat> in the early miles, that you'll get punished. Uh, in the latter miles, when on a flat section of the course, you feel like you're, you're really. Um, uh, gassed out. So we're coming up to the mile mark here. Um, this is uh, the, f the first p time that you're going to be actually encouraged, or not encouraged, you're going to be directed to stay on the right-hand side of the road, and you'll see in a second why. So right about there is the mile mark, and of course John looks like he's observing the rules of the road here, so uh, I think he's going to say he edited this at the stop signs. Um, so anyway, the section up ahead, um, right in here, you'll be directed to stay to the right because the faster runners, and last year, of course, it was a really fast runner, Sean Kevin, um, former UVA runner, um, Olympic trials uh, qualifier, just uh, ran in the Olympic trials marathon. He took it out of blistering pace. He was uh, well under five minutes at the mile mark. And, of course, the average median time of this course last year was 95 minutes, 9.5-minute pace. You can do the math. Um, Sean was coming back 
through two miles and down this stretch of road long before folks were coming through the mile mark. So we want to give him free road and also at the same time give you, uh, the, us, us mere mortals, the, the um, uh, freedom of the, our side of the road. So uh, this is where the course opens back up again. you got Scott Stadium on the left and what they used to call the new dorms on the right. They're, they're not new dorms anymore, but you've got Scott Stadium on the left. And gentle, gentle rise here along Alderman. You'll be in the left-hand lane here. John, of course, is observing the rules of the road. Um, you'll go over to the left, and you'll hit uh, um, the loop that goes around the stadium. Uh, looks like he's getting closer to um, that side of the road. So Sean last year ran under 49 minutes, the first time ever somebody had done that. He was only the fourth person in history to break the magical 50-minute mark. Um, pretty special um, time for a uh, really, really good guy and, a, um, like I said, an exceptional time. So you make a, a left-hand turn here, and this is where I tell folks you can begin to let it go a little bit because the, you want to take advantage of the downhills. And what does that mean? Lean into them. There's no effort to run a downhill uh, as far as um, depleting you. It does nothing to deplete you. You know, it might hurt your quads or your knees long term, but uh, um, in a race, you just let it fly. Now, here's another decent uphill. And what you don't want to do, we're still early, we're not even at two miles, is you do not want to push these uphills. And this is where I think a lot of people make mistakes. I used to call it the Bryant Hall Hill because Bryant Hall is where the athletes um, all the UV athletes used to eat their dinner, which is right behind the stadium here. And this is where a lot of folks make the mistake. They get a little too anxious, a little too, too um, competitive, and they start pushing the pace, trying to pass people. And this is not a kind hill here right um, <clears throat> behind the stadium here. You can see John is slowing down, um, pedaling to get up it. And it's long, and it's relatively steep. So again, I, this is a place where I would ease back. Let some folks pass you. Who cares? Um, you're actually storing up energy for the for the long haul. You can see um, what it's doing to John's uh, cadence here. And John is an experienced, uh, um, fit cyclist, and you can see it's slowing him down um, here, which is a good good way for us to do this video tutorial. Get it done quicker, obviously, as cyclists, but you can still get a notion of the, the terrain. You make an abrupt left here, and uh, Whitehead Road here, which kind of splits the engineering school and the stadium complex. And you're still climbing. And you can see the car up ahead of John is above him and the terrain. So, again, just because the two-mile mark is coming up, which is going to be here any second, um, you don't want to rush to that two-mile mark to get a really great split. Um, I remember there's a two-mile mark there. I remember Trish Phillips many years ago. I had an opportunity to coach her, and she really, really wanted to win the 10-miler. It's kind of neat to have, see someone have that goal. And she, I gave her the strategy. I knew who was entering the race, and I said, do not be any faster than 6.30 pace at the two-mile mark. I said, there will be some women go out a little faster. They'll probably be at about 12 minutes. Ignore them. Stay back. She was about 12.50 at the two-mile mark. The leaders were 12.05, and she caught them uh, downtown at about five and a half, six miles. So, again, no reason to um, hurry through this. Okay, so you're through two miles. You make an abrupt right. Back on to Alderman, you got AFC on the right, and the perspective is we always joke, everyone thinks they're slower than someone else, but you're also fast than lots of folks too, so at this point there'll be runners on your left still heading out, um, and then you'll be on obviously the right-hand side heading up towards central grounds. Slight, slight, gentle, gradual um, uphill here, nothing to be uh, concerned about, nothing to be too, uh, um, too anxious about. So uh, heading up into central grounds here, and I think, you know, an iconic part of the course, and we, when we were designing the course um, back in 1983, before the 84 uh, inaugural, we, uh, we really felt strongly that the university had to be showcased. So you're on McCormick Road now. This is a nice flat section of the course, another spot on the race course where they'll be doubling back, but much later on. You'll get your first water right in here at the island coming up. And if it's a warm day, which it can quite often be, I, I use the phrase drink early and drink often and even pour some water on your head. We start the race nice and early for lots of reasons. Uh, Deb, Gilbert, Deb Gilbert, our race director, 
Um, has got the starting time at 7.15, I believe. Shalso Track Club believes strongly in the notion of getting along with our neighbors. So uh, we, we try and get off the roads before it impacts people's um, driving patterns, uh, shopping, businesses. Um, we really like to get off early. Uh, second reason is so that our um, volunteers can get on with the day, racers can get on with the day. And then the third reason is, and it's a big one, it's the environment. And Dr. Wilder, our medical director, always says the earlier we can get the race finished, the better, because the sun um, is our enemy. Um, so if you're on a warm day, spring warm day of 60, 65 degrees, you can really feel crushed. Okay, so we're heading up uh, through central grounds here, and this is a slight uphill, one of the only uphills in, in the central grounds area. And, of course, that'll be a nice downhill coming back at about eight and three-quarter miles. But right now we're about two and a half miles, two and three-quarter miles into the, into the course. Um, amphitheater on the right and uh, West Range, where Edgar Allan Poe resided for a short period of time. Uh, I think folks think he was here all four years, but he was not. Didn't quite make it. Um, and here we are. So, right, really, I think this is one of the most special places of, of university grounds is right here along the range. And you got the Alderman Library Complex on the left. And you can see John's cadence here. He's picked it up, so you're going to get a nice gradual downhill. And from this point forward, I really feel pretty strongly that every downhill should be heavily taken advantage of. In other words, uh, get off your heels. Um, you shouldn't be running on your heels anyway, but really concentrate more on the forefoot area, nose over toes, leaning, um, and letting the terrain pull you, pull you downwards. So up to one of the, you can see the amount of traffic. Um, and on race day, uh, thanks to the UVA Police Department, the City Police Department, um, and of course the Shulso Track Club and all the volunteers, the course will be free of autos. Okay, so we're right through the three mile mark. That of course was a famous intersection of Cars Hill, the President's House on the left, Rugby, and University Avenue. A mad Bowl on your right. Um, and we're heading up towards the 5K mark, which is right around Madison House. We couldn't do the race without our friends at Madison House. Every year, big, big help to us. They give us a great force of volunteers, and of course, Madison House has such a positive, uh, profound influence on our community. So, shooting up rugby here, and you pass the 5K mark right about now. And rugby is another one that's a little misleading. It's a slight uphill all the way up to Grady, um, the highest point of the course. There's Madison House right there, one of Papa Bush's thousand points of light. That was kind of a neat honor to get. Across Beta Bridge, the iconic Beta Bridge. And there'll be volunteers at every single intersection uh, cheering you along. I forgot to mention the pep band, uh, the university band, uh, um, marching band, uh, will be at uh, back at the chapel that we passed uh, just at the three mile mark. So still heading up rugby, and this again you're starting to get yourself in the race mode here in that maybe pushing the uphill a little bit, but still not going hard on it, not uh, putting all your, your uh, energy into uh, wasting it on, a, on an uphill. Um, you want to kind of ease back a little bit. A little traffic here. Of course, on race day, this will not happen. Um, you're coming up to the light at Grady, and from Grady, you will climb one of the steepest, the shortest, steepest hills of the entire course. And when you crest that hill, and we'll show you here, you will be at the highest point on the course and one of the highest points in the city of Charlottesville. So right about here, you can see how the, yeah, that's pretty steep. And once you crest here, um, this is where you really want to fly. Um, it's one of the, well, it is the single longest um, descent, downhill section of the entire course. And interestingly enough, uh, the first we we set the course up, and the first year we, the first year, the first time we went out to test it, a bunch of the guys, we ran it backwards. So we went up Main Street, and then down um, to downtown, and then came back up Preston and Grady. And we did that one time and said, forget it, um, that's too long an uphill um, to hit the runners at seven and eight miles. So um, we're heading down now. Um, a lot of traffic here. Poor John. Okay, so away we go. 
And when I say away we go, if you do not lean into this downhill and take advantage of it, you have missed the single greatest golden opportunity of the course. So from about 3.4 to about 4.7, um, which is a lot of real estate, it's downhill. And you just, again, if you sit back on your heels and your torso is, um, you can actually look down at your feet, you are wasting again opportunity you're breaking and you don't want to be breaking on a downhill you want to open it up and uh, get on get on the balls of your feet um, great neighborhood in here uh, Grady Avenue um, this is just on the outskirts of the University of Venable neighborhood and a lot of a lot of cheering a lot of folks out in here and then we have the famous um, gospel choir up here at the church on the corner of Grady and uh, um, Tenth. So again, uh, this is a point now where I feel like there's no more kind of strategizing as far as worrying. You should just be enjoying this section of the course as you're gobbling up, uh, um, you know, real estate at a, at a pretty rapid rate. Um, it's one of the biggest intersections in the entire course, and again, it'll be auto-free. Um, some years, the male leader is broken away at this point, but many years the, um, the male leaders are right together. Uh, member of the year, um, Bob Thiele and Charlie Hurt. Um, nothing separated them, it seemed like, the entire way, almost to the nine-and-a-half mile mark, and they were locked in here uh, step for step. Um, and speaking of, you know, competitiveness, we always, we always tease about a race. A lot of folks say, I'm not a very competitive person, I don't really care, but um, I do think it's a it's a good uh, um, opportunity to test your fitness, test your um, ability. Um, okay, there is the four mile mark. We just passed it. Um, still heading downhill. So anyway, I was thinking a race. You can use um, fellow runners as uh, pace people, or you can use parts of the course. Um, meaning, you know, you see someone up ahead with a yellow shirt on. They're way up ahead and say, "I'd like to draw that person closer to me. Use them as a as a um, focal point." I love the, the late John Shrum, uh, really a wonderful uh, citizen in our community, just passed away last year. Uh, John, um, really funny, uh, one time said, um, this really just keeps it all relative. He came in to the shop one day and said, Mark, I need your help today. you got to tell me how um, I'm going to get under 50 minutes for the 10-miler. And I said, what? He was not a sub-five-minute pace racer by any means. He was a good, good long-distance swimmer. And I said, under five, 50 minutes, wow. And he goes, yeah, I just need for you to tell me whether you think I should do it at the six-mile mark or that I could do it by the uh, seven-mile mark. So all relative. Um, everybody's pace is different. Like I said, 9.30 pace, um, the average, median time. When we opened the course up to the city course in 84, um, the median time was 75 minutes. So it's, it's changed uh, over two minutes uh, over the last uh, um, 30 years. All right, so we're still going downhill and probably one of the single biggest intersections of the entire course. This is a Ridge McIntyre, um, Preston, and John again observing the rules of the road. And this is really pretty much where it bottoms out. Um, you've, you've, the, the gift is over and now you're going to start a climb. And you do want to put some effort into this, not all out because it's still um, not even at the halfway point. This is where the police car, motorcycle leaves um, the, the lead vehicle. Lead vehicle goes up market, but the runners go up Old Preston here. And uh, John, um, because the rules of the, the downtown mall, you will not be on the sidewalk here, you'll be on Old Preston. The rules of the downtown mall, of course, are that no cyclists there. So we had a, a little bit of a challenge with that, John. Um, I think he said he actually gets off and... Um, walks the bicycle for the most part. So, of course, we had to include the downtown mall in when we were designing the course. Um, it's beautiful. It's historic brick, neat, neat uh, really neat um, um, part of our community. So downtown mall is pretty much all uphill going west to east. So don't be frustrated if your pace slows a little bit, but you good part of the fifth mile, so after you hit the four-mile mark, 
um, before you get to the fifth, you, you've been able to go downhill. So it's kind of one of these miles that evens itself out. You'll be hugging the left side of the mall going up. And, of course, John has gotten off, and he's, he's walking, and so that's why it's slowing. It is not that big an uphill. It, you will not have to go that slow. And on race morning, these signs won't be out because um, the businesses won't be open uh, that early in the morning. Um, so, like I said, 7.15 start. You can do the math. You'll know about what time you'll be hitting here. Um, um, again, about four and a half miles. So, pretty special um, part of the course. Um, and John is just walking along here. So, um, so another strategy, of course, to be paying attention to. We talked about water hydration. Some people carry belts. On a hot day, not a bad idea, so you can sip it, which is always the most exercise physiologists agree. That sipping it gently throughout the course of a race is um, probably better than just gulping it every two or three miles. But having said that, if you're not carrying a belt, we will have the Schultzville Track Club. It was beautifully organized this event for um, 40 years. Um, uh, it has water stops uh, about every two, two and a half miles at most. And the next water stop that the folks will hit will be up here at the at the north end of the, the mall. Good, John, you're passing, passing that walker there. All right, so um, he's clipping along pretty good considering he's off the bicycle and uh, um, with his camera here. So um, so the track club, getting back to it, we've got just wonderful help from lots of folks. Um, board of directors oversees this. Um, the two jewel events of the year, of course, the women's four-miler and the Schultzville ten-miler. Um, with the men's four-miler now having been added to the, to the mix, we got um, lots of great help um, from uh, lots of wonderful people, and, um, and Deb Gilbert at the helm, like I said, and Leah Connor really uh, doing a lot of the work behind the scenes. Um, we're we're in good shape with a lot of experienced folks. It takes about 350 volunteers to organize the event uh, on race day to to pull the event off between intersections, um, the splits. There'll be a split red due every mile. Uh, of course, it's chip time, so that split obviously. It doesn't directly apply to you, in, in that you, unless you're up on the starting line, the split will obviously be um, off, but you will get chip timed and, and an accurate uh, um, time for you after you cross the, the starting line mat. So we're almost up to the water stop, and this is the, the east end of the mall where the pavilion is. Um, when we, we kicked off the race in 84, there was no pavilion. Um, it was... Um, you know, the, this whole section of the course was completely different. And, of course, today we we run ourselves right up, almost butt up to the pavilion and make an abrupt left up here. So you'll be staying on the left-hand side of the course here, hugging it, going east. And we come back down on it, we'll show you what happens there. Hopefully John has got it uh, cruising in the right direction when he comes back. So the water stop will be right in here, right in front of City Hall. And that was a big deal back in 83, speaking of City Hall, where the... the City uh, um, manager, Cole Hendricks, and the mayor, Frank Buck, and the chief of police, Deke Bowen, granted us permission to have the first race ever where the streets would be closed, and with the caveat that if we messed it up, it would never happen again. Um, and we did mess it up, and uh, the rest is history. All right, so we're coming up 7th. You can see it's a one-way street there, and they would just pass the five-mile mark. And, yeah, just pass it. And so... Is it going to the okay good so up we head to the um the, this will be a, a out and back section of the course so you'll be on the left hand side of the road you're going out and where john's shadow is you'll be coming in that in the opposite direction on that side of the road coming back you're making a really sharp left here onto jefferson another part of the course i felt really strongly when we were designing it that we had to include was the historic court square section so that's a decent uphill there Again, don't waste too much energy. Save it for the flats. Save it for the for pushing the down. As you can, it's a course that if you if you play it properly and you play it um, patiently, it can reward you. So we're, we're now really right in the, the epicenter of Court Square, and um, a lot of the old uh, law firms and law offices are here. The old county courthouse to the right. Um, Beautiful section, of course. I mean, this is a spot you want to look up. Okay, so this is when I actually got to race the 
the event the year after I retired as race director. So uh, um, 1996, uh, I got to race it for the first time. This is one section, of course, where I felt like it's a, another gift. You fly down Jefferson, past the synagogue, synagogue past the Catholic Church. Um, got Queen Charlotte Square here and the Historical Society on the left. Turn right here, George Allen's old law office there. Is, that's the oldest building in Court Square, right there on the left. So you make an abrupt right here. You're still going downhill. And I just think this is a great section to, to make up time. Uh, there's no excuse. Just lean into it. You're, you're at about 5.1 when you, you start to go downhill, and it doesn't level off again till about 5.6 maybe. So here's the steepest downhill of the entire course, um, I think, 2nd Street. Uh, these homes are so beautiful along here. One of the years, uh, my brother used to design the shirts every year. He's a an architect and a, a great artist, and one of the shirt designs was right here on 2nd Street and was one of the most popular shirts of all. So I think it's got a little feel of San Francisco here because the, the houses are built uh, at angles going down the hill. All right, so past 2nd, uh, past the... Right through here, it's still going downhill, and then again it, it bottoms out. I think John would normally stop at those stop signs, but because we're trying to get this done as quick as possible. All right, so this is the infamous Northwood Hill in another beautiful residential area. This is the north downtown um, neighborhood uh, area, and this is a toughie, but you're, you're, again, you don't want to go all out on it, but this is where you want to kind of focus on Santa Wright. Um, I'm hurting a little bit, but uh, um, I don't want to lose too much time at this point, so we're you know, well over halfway through the course. You're still climbing Northwood here. Um, again, beautiful homes, beautiful neighborhood. Love this section of the, the course. Um, neighbors are so supportive, the neighborhood associations along here. Um, they come out in throngs and they actually have breakfasts and brunch type stuff with it among themselves and with music and they hang out flags and decorate the course. All right, we're coming up on park and of course on race day, you will zoom right through this intersection um, obviously not uh, with the traffic. It's not, John's not able to do that right now with the traffic as it is, but you'll shoot across and right. Here we go. Make an abrupt right onto Evergreen. So it's almost directly across from Northwood is Evergreen. And this probably is the most populated area for spectators. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of folks come on out uh, David Toscano's house is right up here on the right. He's out here every year, former mayor, and now a, a representative for us in Richmond. Okay, so I take advantage of this. This is, you know, you climbed up northward, but you got another nice gradual downhill and then a very steep, um, short downhill section that takes you through the six-mile mark. Let's see if we can see the six-mile mark painted on the road here. Um, just about in here. There it is. So six miles. Um, I, I would just keep rolling through here. Uh, honestly, this is really another section to take advantage of. Um, that was a rolling stop on that guy's part. Okay, so uh, downhill, downhill, downhill. And uh, the reason I'm being a little um, melodramatic about it is because you're about ready to hit the longest uphill of the course. So why not take advantage of it? It's an interesting part of the course where the name of the street, the street doesn't change, just makes a little curve in it, and Evergreen suddenly becomes Lexington. There's no demark, uh, no, no, no sign for it. It just suddenly happens. So anyway, you're coming up Lexington here, um, and through the 10K mark, and of course 6.2 miles in, um, pretty neat. And it's not a steep hill; it's just unending and. Um, I think this is just one to focus either telephone pole to telephone pole or intersection to intersection. This is the, the uh, streets along here, the ones named after trees. So you've got Sycamore and Poplar. Um, just, just keep chugging along. Maybe this is one where you, you focus in on someone up ahead of you and say, I'm not going to let them get any further ahead of me going up this hill or maybe even try to catch up and get alongside of them. Again, it's not that steep. It's just long. Um, the old Martha Jefferson Hospital used to be 
here on the left. Um, we always used to tease that you know, the hospital at the top of the longest hill, of course, you have the hospital on the left and the, the cemetery on the right. Um, all right, so you can see John slowing down here, and there's a reason. This is the steepest section of Lexington. And again, I, I would use either, again, the telephone poles or intersections to, to break up the hill rather than say, oh, my gosh, i got to go from the top, the bottom of this to the top. Cemetery on the right, beautiful old cemetery. Um, some tombstones in there, upwards of 250 um, years old. Okay, so we're going to make an abrupt right here onto Maple. And this is uh, another, I think, I'm glad you. I would say I'm glad you can't see Maple from the bottom of Lexington because if, if you saw this this steep hill here, it'd be a little mentally uh, um, damaging. So uh, this is a hill I would encourage you to kind of work your way up through because you get a beautiful reprieve on the other side. Um, you can see the old cemetery wall on the right, beautiful brick work there, and we're heading up. I'm going to make an abrupt left up here back onto 7th. And, of course, you remember earlier in the tutorial, 7th is the street you took up off of the mall. So you will not crisscross the folks. Uh, um, some, some folks use this crisscross section up ahead. Some of the uh, runners over the years have said, I try to get to that section before the leader is coming back down here. So the leader coming through this intersection is at about 6 0.7, 6.8, and you going out are at about 5.1. So if you can, that means you're less than two miles behind the leader at that point. There's pretty good stuff. Somebody like Sean last year running 450 pace. So, um, yeah, Sean had at uh, 450 pace. I had a little pause there, but Sean um, running 450 pace, and <clears throat> the mere mortals running anywhere from six minute pace all the way up to. to Oh my gosh, we go back to 14, 15, 16 minute pace. They're, um, they get all kinds of uh, crisscrossing going on. So anyway, this is a nice, again, section of downhill that you really, at this point, one of the last opportunities to take full advantage of. You've been going downhill since you crested 7th. You zoom through market here, and you're heading right down. Again, no cars on race day. You can see the five-mile mark there, and that's the five-mile going out. So you'll be on the left-hand side of this um, section of road here that's in between the City Hall and the City Annex. And again, you, you want to be flying through here, and you'll be guided to the left of these um, poles here. So the runners will be coming to your right going out, but if you're coming back in onto the mall, you're going to be guided to the left. There's some folks there running the course. And you're going to head by the water here, so you've had the water coming up the mall, and now you're getting the water going down west on the mall. You're going to hug the, the southern side of the mall, um, past the Discovery Museum here, and headed to uh, Fifth Street. And really, your momentum should not be broken at all, except maybe to pick up a cup of water, pour it on your head if it's a hot day, and certainly drink um, a cup, so grab two cups. There's always plenty of water, plenty of cups to go around, so don't worry about that. Track Club, again, does a really good job of managing um, the medical, um, the aid stations. So you take a left here, and you're on 5th Street, and you're still going downhill, and right about there is 7 miles, and you're still cruising here, and you're going to take a right onto Water Street, beautiful old historic street, a lot of old warehouses that have been renovated, um, really one of my favorite sections of the course for just the, the history of it. You've got the back end of the buildings of the mall here. You're really flying through here. Um, again, taking full advantage of it, full advantage, full advantage. Um, really getting off your heels and focusing on that, that kind of nose over toes where you're leaning into it um, because it's about ready to change dramatically here coming up on a real smack down of a hill. Um, yourself right here. Okay, so you can see it up ahead, steep uphill here. Um, it uh, heads up to the courthouse at the top of the hill there. And because you're, you're tired and you, you're far into the race, um, this hill is actually no steeper than 
some of the hills we had early on in the race, but because of its location and um, <clears throat> where it falls in the in the actual timeline of the race, um, you're you're going to be tired going up it. So um, you really have to mentally focus that much more. You don't want to be killing yourself going up it, but you're going to really have to work harder to get up it than you would have earlier just because of how tired you are. And this is about where the reality of um, the kind of the second half of the course, even though we're well beyond the second half, this is where it really starts to play heavy in here is this um, <clears throat> first steep uphill on, on water here. I always tell folks that, you know, that, that term core is used so much these days, and a lot of times people aren't sure how that applies, but this is where your core works um, kicks in. So you want to use your arms to pull your torso, um, generate strength from your upper body, and pick your knees up. Focus on picking your knees up and getting your feet off the ground a little bit more. And if you can do that in 30-second increments, 30 seconds of driving like that, 30 seconds of going back to kind of your, your normal uh, running style, I think you can get up a hill a lot faster. And then, like I said earlier, break the hill up. Use landmarks to break it up. So, of course, Corner of Ridge McIntyre here, the famous Lewis and Clark statue, um, iconic intersection of the course. A lot of volunteers and police there. Brand new hotel on the, the right, the Marriott. Um, pretty pretty nice uh, building they put up here this last year. That was not even started this time last year. And now every race, every um, you know great American foot race that's urban oriented has to include Main Street. And here we are on Main Street. So yeah, we're heading heading back towards this is kind of the break point between downtown and the university, the kind of town and gown notion. Um, John just sitting there stabilizing himself. And off we go again. And the, the couple of interesting things about Main Street uh, strategically. First off, you know, where it lies in the course. You're, you're between seven and eight miles now. Um, you'll be in this parking lane here. So you're, you're tired and you're mentally tired. And it's quiet here, not as many spectators, not as many volunteers. So you have to focus a little bit more. But the second thing is it's it's the longest straightaway stretch without any bends, curves, turns. And that can play mentally on it. So you so I always tell folks, don't look too far down the road. Focus on the person in front of you or two people in front of you, maybe three people in front of you. But try not to look towards the, the, the horizon because it can get mentally almost like running at the beach. And you run on one of those long straightaway roads at the beach and that water tower up ahead never seems to get any closer. Try not to use something far up in the distance. The third challenge, and you're seeing it a little bit here, and this is the sneaky part of this, is that Main Street from climbing up Water Street onto Main Street is an all uphill uh, climb. It's not obvious in the car, but you can see it here. We're gently climbing, climbing, climbing until we crest at the Drury Brown Bridge, named after the legendary, um, iconic citizen who did so much to bridge um, black and white in our community, a wonderful man, um, uh, Drury Brown. So now you, you've crossed over from downtown into the university area, and you can see you get a little reprieve here. Take advantage every time you feel like it's getting easier to run to downhill. Try and pick up the pace a little bit. Not pick up the effort, but pick up the pace. And, of course, that's a riddle. But if it is a downhill, you can pick up the pace without picking up the effort. We're cruising through. Um, this is 10th Street here. And so it flattens out. We're almost at the 8-mile mark. So I would say somewhere between 7.8 and 8 miles, you get a nice uh, flat section. You're pretty much done with that long uphill section that leads to the... So really make, make Drury Brown Bridge your your goal to kind of mentally get to, and then you get a little break in here, and you're coming up on eight. You'll see it up here right in front of Stacy Hall. There it is, eight miles, and heading, heading up to the corner now. Um, nice flat section here, so you really have to, again, stay mentally, I know it's cliche, but focused and engage you because it's easy to fall asleep. Children's Hospital on the left, beautiful uh, new building and another place that the Schultz Track Club has donated lots of dollars to over the years through their race directing efforts. That's the Boar's Head Turkey Trot each year. Okay, so here's a neat thing that happens in Schultzville. Being a little sarcastic, a street doesn't change direction, but it changes its name. So we've gone from Main Street to University Avenue, and obviously University Avenue coming right into the heart of the University of Virginia. Got a nice downhill here. 
Take advantage of it again. You'll start to see more spectators, a little more crowds in here, right through 14th Street, underneath the 14th Street Bridge, famous for all of its trucks getting stuck under the bridge. And there it is, the iconic and historic uh, UVA corner, one of the oldest shopping districts in the state of Virginia, um, near and dear to my heart uh, for a long time. So you, you're heading up here to uh, talk about an iconic business, Mincers, up on the right. And uh, we'll always have a good water stop there. The track club added that uh, several years ago when we had a really hot day and the felt, folks felt like the gap between seven miles and nine miles was a little too much. So you get a um, pretty pretty popular water stop here. Some years it's the most popular of all because of where it comes in the, in the race here. So you're climbing, and this corner hill is legendary. People talk about it quite often. And again, I, I think it's a t one of the tamer hills of all the hills on the course, but where it comes, 8.5 miles in, 8.4, and it makes it seem like, you know, the toughest hill. And uh, um, it really, uh, if, if you've played it right and ne tried to negative split the course, if you haven't pushed those hills, you've acted rationally at the beginning, not acted emotionally, you've laid back on a lot of those uphills, especially in the first two miles, you can come up this hill. I'm not saying you're going to fly up it, but you can certainly have it be a lot more um, enjoyable and palatable, um, having having reserved some energy um, early on. So you'll be on the left-hand side of the road here, just passing the, the historic uh, UVA Rotunda, which is um, under renovation, but will be um, back back to um, its, its glory um, pretty soon. You make a left, and this is last year where Sean was actually coming back um, leading the race, and there were people um, still streaming out. That's the three-mile mark for them and for the leaders, 8.5, or for coming back about 8.5, 8.6. Got the chapel on the left. Uh, the band will be playing there again. And you're back into central grounds. The range and aldermen. And got a gentle uphill here. You're tired, you're, you're, but you're encouraged because you know it's less than two miles, um, less than a quarter of the race left to go. And you, I think you can sense that with some digging down deeper, um, just wrapping your head a little tighter around the task at hand, that you can, you can make it in, uh, um, in, in good shape. Okay, so through the central grounds. Again, we're slightly climbing here. Um, I, again, you're, if you're tired, try to play tricks with yourself on people up ahead of you, focusing on someone with a you know, a certain colored shirt that's four or five people up ahead. Whoops, there we go, good job. Um, Monroe Hill on the right. And nice little payback hill coming here, downhill, um, that you climbed, obviously, earlier, but probably didn't notice it, because, again, it's one of those, what I call the early hills. But here, lean and go. Um, really, really let, let it take you down right over the um, the Emmett Street Bridge, you pass Newcomb Road, Emmett Street Bridge, into the heart of uh, the living situation in Central Grounds, the old dorms, and the quad. And really, this is again, I, I, at this point, I think the seatbelts are off. You're just, you're, you're, no matter how tired you are, you say, I don't need to be reserving anything. I don't need to be saving it. You're not going to save it for the last final kick. That's, that doesn't make sense when you, you, you can't save much time by saving it for the last kick, but you can over the last mile. We just passed nine miles, so it's just before you hit the old dorms, um, you hit nine miles, and now that's it. You know, the gates are up here. You pass the water stop again. Um, the water stop, you hit it about 2.2. You're hitting it about 9.1. Um, I, I think people make a mistake of not hitting that stop sometimes. Just grab a cup of water, get a few sips, pour some on your head, if it's again a warm day or sunny day, of course, with the, wisely with the early start, the track club has. Um, hopefully, the heat. If there is, uh, if it is a warm day, you're not affected by it too much. Even if you're out there two, two, fifteen, two and a half hours. Coming up to the intersection of um, Alden and McCormick, and about ready to leave um, the university grounds and head to what we call, you know, the roller coaster section of the race. So last series of hills, and this is where you just forget about strategy. You just you're just putting it down. So taking advantage of the downhills, and really a 
uh, work in the uphills. Uh, I just uh, 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 this event deep in deep in my soul. I, I ran it, I raced it several times when I first arrived here in the late '70s, early '80s. Used to go out to Camp Holiday Trails and back, and then started directing it with Dave uh, for the track club. Uh, in 84, when we changed the course from Camp Holiday Trails to what we call the city course, we had the Doobie Brothers theme song we used that year, taking it to the streets, and um, it, uh, I retired from directing after um, 12 years and, and started, I raced it again a few times and, and now I've been helping with it ever since and absolutely love the event. It's our oldest, most revered foot race and it really does capture um, the community and it's it's kind of the poor man's marathon meaning that you know it's still a t long way to go and it's a tough course so you can see what's happening here um, a lot of up and down there's there's hardly a single stretch of totally flat along the entire span of Alderman great downhill here you're you're less than half a mile from the finish come on go and and you you again if you're trying to break some milestone, 70, 80, 90 minutes, uh, you're trying to break 10 minute pace, you're trying to break two hours, get, get it going in here because you, the finish line comes up really fast now. We, we remeasured the course last year after many years of changes being, uh, you know, because of new construction along the course, roads closed, and we went back and rewheeled it, remeasured it, and found that the finish line is even closer um, to you, to, to um, the Alderman scenario here, closer uh, by several, it was about 150 meters. So you don't have that long stretch that you used to in the past to sprint. So one really last down, where I, I would fly through there, and of course, you know, the road would be free of traffic. You'll go sailing through this intersection at uh, um, Ivy. Um, there's That's University Avenue again. It became Ivy Road, and then, of course, ultimately becomes 250. Anyway, you you fly through here, and this is the one of all the hills. This is the one that you're just going to say, it's not a hill. I am just, I'm giving it everything I have because you really don't have any real estate left once you get on the other side of uh, uh, the railroad track uh, bridge here. And you crest it. You're in an all-out kick now because last year some folks were surprised where the finish line was because it, you make this little bend here, and I'll show it to you. It's in the road. You'll see the white paint mark here. It is. That's the finish. So it's actually before the track. So as soon as you, you catch sight of the track coming around, and John kept on going here because I hadn't gone over with him, clearly the finish line. So hope you enjoyed it. I um, hope you're going to make it out on race day. We need volunteers if you're not going to race. Um, thanks, John Conroy.